In this module, we're going to talk about Mendel's Law, and this is the last module of the biology section, so we are just cruising through. Alright, so Mendel's Laws. There are two laws. One is the law of segregation. This is the first law, and it states that there are two alleles and that half of the number of alleles are contributed by each parent. So an allele is a trait. It can be height, eye color, hair color, things like that. So there'll be two traits, one that comes from one parent, one that comes from the other. The second law is the law of independent assortment, states that traits are passed on randomly and are not influenced by other traits. So if someone has blonde hair, that doesn't mean they're going to have blue eyes. Their traits are not influenced, except if they are a linked trait. A Punnett square that, that looks like this over here on the side illustrates how alleles combined from the contributing genes to form various phenotypes. So a phenotype is what you see. So this is going to show us the breakdown of how these different traits are inherited between the two parents and what we are likely going to see. So say that these T's are for yep, having a tall stem versus a short stem. So if we take a, a parent of the plant that has a tall stem and we cross it with a parent of a plant that has a short stem, all of the children are going to have tall stems because the capital T is our dominant gene that's being passed on. So that is the one that's going to be expressed in all of these. Uh, one set of parent genes are put in a column while the genes from the other parent are placed in rows. So we can see one parent has the columns, that's the lowercase t, the short, and the other one is in the rows, and that is the dominant. The alleles combine combinations are shown in each cell, so we can see each cell, the combination is shown. And when two different alleles are presented in a pair, the dominant one is expressed. So yep, we have two different ones in each one. So we know the dominant one's expressed to the tall. And a Punnett square can be used to predict outcomes of a cross. So gene traits are represented in pairs with an uppercase letter for the dominant trait and a lowercase letter for the recessive trait. Genes occur in pairs. Genes are supplied by each parent organism. A dominant trait only requires one gene of a gene pair to be expressed in a phenotype, whereas a recessive requires both genes in order to be manifested. So what this means is the recessive gene here is the short. So it is only going to express, we're only going to get a short stemmed plant if we have two recessive traits together, which we don't for any of the children, but this parent does, which is why it's short. Phenotypes are observed characteristics. So again, it's what we see. An allele is a variation of a gene and traits such as height, eye color. And we can view these plant crossings using Punnett squares. So purebred tall plant crossed with a short plant will result in the first generation, so this is considered the first generation because it's the first cross we did, with all tall plants. They all have the tall phenotype, gene expressed or observable, suggesting that all plants had dominant and recessive genes. So if we take that F1 generation and we cross it with itself to produce an F2, so this is our our, the first cross we did, which gave us right here, is the F1 generation. Now if we take two of those plants and we cross them together, so we have two of them here, we are then getting this, which is the F2 generation. It will show us that we will get one short plant. So genotype is the genes they carry. So the genotype is going to be, do they have two dominant traits, like here? Do they have a dominant and a recessive, or do they have two recessive? And it may not always be expressed. So we know that when we have a dominant and recessive, that only the dominant is expressed. So there's no way to know, is this plant a, is this plant 
have these types of genes or does it have these type of genes because the plants are going to look the exact same. A gene is a portion of DNA that identifies how traits are expressed and passed on in an organism. Phenotype is the observable characteristics. We can see that the genotype is one-fourth dominant or double tall plants, two-fourths dominant and recessive gene, and one-fourth the short plants. However, the phenotype, so what we're going to see, is three out of the four plants are going to be tall and only one is going to be short. So then we can have monohybrid and dihybrid crosses. So a monohybrid cross refers to a cross involving only one trait. So this could be, you know, tall stock and short stock. So typically the ratio is three to one, of, which is the ratio of dominant gene manifestations to recessive gene manifestations. So this is a monohybrid cross. We have just one gene that we're looking at, we're looking at that tall stem. This ratio occurs when both parents have a pair of dominant and recessive genes. So to get the three to one, it's going to be when both ha parents have a dominant and recessive. So this is gonna be our F2 cross. The three to one is the F2 cross. If one parent has a dominant gene and the other has a recessive gene, so that is here, that's this one, the recessive trait cannot be expressed in the next generation because the resulting crosses all have that dominant and recessive genotype. So the three to one, just to clarify, the three to one ratio is if we have two parents that have a dominant and a recessive gene. You will see, if we think back to our F2 generation cross, three tall plants and one short. However, if the parents are like this one and have a dominant gene type and a recessive gene type, you will only see tall plants in the F1 cross. Now, a dihybrid cross refers to one involving more than one trait, which means more combinations are possible. So now we're looking at these pea plants that are round and yellow, round and green, wrinkled and yellow, wrinkled and green. So we're looking at round versus wrinkled and yellow versus green, but now there's two traits. So the cross is not as simple as a four cross. We now have 16 different varieties of which can happen. So the ratio of genotypes for a dihybrid cross is nine, three, three, and one. And so that means that you're gonna see nine of the dominant traits, three of a dominant with a recessive, dominant with a recessive, and one with the recessive traits. And we can see over here, it looks like Wrinkled is going to be the small r, so you can see here, the small r is wrinkled. Round is going to be the large r. And yellow is going to be the large y. And green is going to be the lowercase y. So the way we can know this is that round starts with r, so round is the dominant trait, wrinkled is the recessive, and yellow is the dominant trait, and green is recessive. So. If we go back to this ratio, just to clarify, we would see nine round yellow plants, we would see three round green plants, we would see three wrinkled yellow plants, and we would see one wrinkled green plant in the cross, which actually shows it right over here if you count it, them, so, all right. Now, there are non-Medellian concepts, so there's a concept of codominance, which refers to the expression of both alleles, so that both traits are shown. The ABO human blood typing system is an example of a codominant, so again, it's showing more than one trait, like if you have AB blood, you have both traits, the A and the B. There's also incomplete dominance. This is when both the dominant and recessive gene are expressed, resulting in a phenotype that is the mixture of the two. So if we crossed a white flower and a red flower, we would get pink flowers. That's incomplete dominance. There's also polygenetic 
Inheritance, which refers to traits that are influenced by more than one gene and take into account environmental influences on development. And there are multi alleles. Only two alleles make up a gene, but when there are three or more possible alleles, it is known as a multi allele. A gene where only two alleles are possible is termed polymorphic. All right, so that is the end of this module. So make sure to take the quiz, and I will see you in the next module. Bye.